Hi, this is Lesio. Hope you're well. It's good to be back. So in this video, I want to dig into the chart of the stock markets here, especially after what's been happening in the last several weeks and months. So let's dig into the charts. I want to explain to you what is likely happening here on the patterns on the chart of the S&P, the stock markets. Are we about to potentially roll over and make new lows? Or is the stock market getting ready in the next few weeks to make new highs? Which is the more likely path for the stock market? Plus also I'll discuss this chart, very important for the markets, and also this chart you're seeing here, and this particular chart about seasonality of the stock market as well. Should be quite interesting. All right, guys, join me. All right, guys, welcome back. Now, before I start, let me say that it's good to be back. Uh, I've missed uh, doing these videos for you guys. And again, if you're watching these videos after several weeks, thank you very much indeed. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my videos, please do so by clicking the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon for notifications. Let me also say that the reason you haven't seen any videos from me on YouTube for some time is because I decided to take a break from YouTube and social media completely. And I think it was a good decision. Honestly, I don't enjoy spending time in social media or YouTube. But again, it's good to be back and just making these videos for you. And this will be a brief video just explaining my thoughts on the stock market here after this most recent movements uh, we can see on the charts and also what I think is likely to happen in the next several weeks and months. Also in this video, I want to discuss with you what I think I got wrong about the markets. And also I want to explain uh, what my position is right now, whether I'm in the market or am I out of the market. I'll explain that to you briefly at the end of the video. And also, as I mentioned before, I'll explain to you the significance of this chart you're seeing here, very important, and also these two charts about the stock market. And also this particular chart here as well, which will be important for the markets in the next several weeks and months. Okay, let's begin with this particular chart first. As I'm sure you know, the stock markets, as they were rallying higher, in this period, really from June, July to August, we had several warning signs, several warning signs of a potential drop in the market. One of them, by the way, I mentioned previously, as you may recall, and that was, as you can see here, when the stock market was reaching a point of extreme over bullish overbought conditions with the RSI 34 setting, getting to an extreme overbought uh, condition, as you can see on the chart. And that was an early warning sign of potential drop in the stock market, which we got, by the way, as you can see here, that was our big drop there, which by the way, took us to an extreme oversold condition on the RSI. If you look at the RSI here, again, this is the 14 setting of RSI in yellow. Notice that as the market dropped here to this trend line support, by the way, you'll notice this trend line. So this trend line running through here, connecting this high to this low. So the market came down to this level. Okay, so the market dropped, came down to the support with RSI becoming oversold as well. So two important conditions were met here. A drop to support and RSI becoming oversold. Notice that whenever the RSI becomes oversold here, as it did in April, notice this drop you're seeing here. Let me just show you this. So this drop that occurred in the spring, it also reached extreme oversold uh, territory here. As was here back in October, November. You know, there it is, October, I think this was. The market dropped here, became oversold. Now, of course, not every signal is going to work out. This one was a false signal, uh, as we can see there. But again, it was very close to a potential bottom. And as we can see, as the market then dropped to support on the trend line with oversold conditions, it then managed to bounce from here. A bounce which we expected, but however, I did not expect the strength of this bounce to be as powerful as it was. Let me just show you this. So let's go on this chart. I've just zoomed in on the stock market here. Let me just say this. I'm going to be honest with you guys. If back in August, if at this point, you'd said to me that the market is going to go all the way back to near the highs it made back in July before the drop, I would have said, no, that's not likely because these kind of V-shaped recoveries, so these kind of V-shaped bounces and recoveries like this in such a short space of time are very rare. They don't usually happen. However, I did expect some gaps to get filled. You probably remember back in August, I said some of these gaps could get filled, like the gap you're seeing here and the gap you're seeing here. So these gaps got filled. But again, I did not expect or anticipate that the bounce would come so quickly to retest, almost retest, very close to the July high, as you can see there. By the way, we managed to fill this gap here as well. So I'm just being honest with you guys. Even though I expected the bounce, I did not expect the bounce to come such a short space of time to almost so close to the July highs. Clearly, I did not get that right. But in any case, the market has began to roll over from this resistance region here. So this was our resistance region as uh, we can see here. 
market came back up to it. And now, after filling that gap there, it's now beginning to roll over, as we can see here. So the market is now retracing uh, this rally. It's come to the 38.2% Fibonacci retracement. And we're not far away now from the 50% and the 61.8% golden ratio retracement here, and this gap you're seeing here as well, which may potentially get filled if we see more downside. In any case, the question I'm sure you're probably wondering is, well, there are two questions you're probably wondering. Uh, the first one is, well, which is now more likely? Is the stock market going to roll over and perhaps break the support at the August lows, which would, by the way, trigger a bear market? Or is the market going to go higher, take out the prior high that it made here and this high, which would, by the way, issue a continuation of the bull market to much higher levels? Firstly, I want to show you this particular chart because it's important for the stock market. As you see here on the left-hand side, uh, I have the large caps. Okay, so this is the S&P. And on the right-hand side, we have RSP, which is the S&P Equal Weighted Index or S&P Equal Weighted ETF. And the key difference between these two charts, as I'm sure you probably know, is as the name suggests, that RSP, the weight is distributed equally between all the stocks in the S&P. Okay, whereas in S&P itself, obviously more weight is given to the large companies, for example, Apple, Google, Microsoft, Meta, and so on and so on. So the reason why we look at these two charts is obvious because this can be a very important leading indicator for the stock market. And it's quite simple. If both the S&P and indeed RSP get above these key levels, okay, the I would say the August highs, that would be a very bullish sign for the stock market. In other words, if the S&P were to get above this August high that you're seeing here at 5650 approximately. And if RSP was to get above its August high, which is about 175, 176, if both of them manage to get above those key levels, those key levels of resistance in the next several weeks and months, that would be a very bullish sign for the stock market, which actually would issue in another rally potentially to the 5,850 to 5,900 levels on the S&P. Again, if that happens, if it's confirmed. On the other hand, on the other hand, you can see there's a line down here, which as you can see on the S&P is at 5119, and on RSP is about 161 or 161.8. So as I'm sure you can probably guess why that level is important, because if both charts, if both RSP and S&P were to get below the lows they made in August, that would significantly increase the risk of a bear market. Okay, so in other words, if both these charts if both S&P and RSP were to drop, if we see a drop on both these charts below the August lows, again, S&P 5119 and RSP is about 161, if this level breaks on both these charts, the risk and the probability would increase for the stock market to be entering some kind of a long-term bear market or some kind of a downtrend. In other words, it would be very bad for the stock market if these levels, if this level was to break on both charts, RSP and S&P. All right, guys. So something to bear in mind. Now, let me say this. Overall, I prefer to stay neutral on the market until I get confirmation. However, I should tell you this, that a lot of the data at the moment, especially data from analyst Jason Geppert, seems to favor the bullish perspective. In other words, the data from Jason Geppert at the moment, the majority of them, seems to favor a breakout to the upside. Uh, in other words, above the August highs. Okay, just letting you know that. I'm not saying that's what's definitely going to happen. Again, there are no definite certainties when it comes to the stock market, as I'm sure you know. All I'm saying is a lot of the data at the moment seems to point to the view that in the next few months, we could potentially take out the August highs and potentially move to new all-time highs. There's also some other data here. Uh, the advanced decline line, a very important leading indicator for the stock market. This market breadth indicator, as you can see here, is still in an uptrend. As you can see, we're still higher highs, higher lows, there is no divergence on the advanced decline line. So this is very bullish for the stock market. Now, if the advanced decline line was to drop below the August lows, that would change. It would be a very strong warning sign for the stock market. The other important indication which I look at is seasonality. And as you can see here, seasonality, as to be expected, is rather weak, very negative in the month of, as you can see right here, September. So no big surprise, September is usually a weak month for the stock market, as we've seen already with the drop in the stock market. So it's playing out to seasonal factors so far. So again, September being a weak month, we're seeing a drop in the market. But look at this, from October, actually from the end of October to December is what's called the Halloween effect. And as you can see, typically from October to December, we should expect some bullishness or some kind of a rally. Again, 
typically from the end of October to November, December, we see strength. We see the market usually rallying, again, based on seasonal factors and what's also called the seasonal Christmas rally as well, which occurs in December. So this is another factor which is quite bullish for the stock market from, I would say, from mid to late October to December. Because of this seasonal factor and also the advanced decline line, again, this seems to favor at the moment. These two factors and also data from Jason Geppert seems to favor the the more bullish view, not necessarily this month in September, but perhaps by the end of October, maybe going to November to December. Okay, so in other words, that data at the moment seems to favor the breakout above these highs, perhaps in October or November. Okay, but let me say again, that is by no means a certainty. It's only a probability because, as I explained, if the stock market, if the stock market was to take out this level, the August lows on both these charts, S&P and RSP, that would trigger a likely downtrend and a reversal, a potential reversal into a bear market. All right, guys, just something to bear in mind. The last thing I want to mention in this video is this. Some of you are probably wondering whether I'm in the market or am I out of the market. Well, let me first of all say that this video is by no means a recommendation to buy or sell into the stock market. It's purely for educational purposes. So I'm just letting you know what I'm doing, but I'm not saying you should do the same thing. Uh, personally, for me, as the market dropped, so when the market dropped down into these support levels here, this trend line support, and when it became oversold on the RSI, by the way, it wasn't just the S&P that became oversold. Also, the S&P futures. S&P futures, when it dropped here, okay, notice that the RSI 14 setting became oversold here, okay, as it did back in April. So based on this drop that occurred here, I did actually accumulate a small position. So when the stock market dropped down to support with oversold conditions here on the RSI, I did accumulate a small long position here at these lows. And that was an expectation of a bounce because I thought a bounce was quite likely. And also I'm using the current drop in the stock market that's happening here to accumulate a bit more. So I'm adding to my position uh, based on the most uh, recent drop that is occurring here. Uh, which, by the way, is looking likely to reach these Fibonacci uh, support levels here as well. Let me say again, it's a very small position that I have in the market, okay? So I would say about it's only like 20 or 25%. And again, the reason why I did that is because we went from a position of high risk to low risk. So back in July and early August, the market was reaching a point of extreme high risk, euphoria, Again, extreme over bullishness, overbought conditions. So that was a point of high risk. So I was waiting for a situation with lower risk. So obviously when the market dropped to oversold conditions, so that to me was an opportunity just to get back in with a small position. Now, of course, as I mentioned before, if the stock market, if the S&P was to drop below the August lows, and if that was confirmed, if that was confirmed, let's say with the Dow Industrials or let's say RSP, the S&P equal weighted, that would change things. So that's my stop loss at the moment here. This point, this level here is my stop loss. If the stock market, again, I'm repeating this point, but it's quite important. If the stock market, if the S&P was to break down below the lows of August, let's say 5119 on the S&P, and if it's confirmed also by either Dow Industrials or indeed RSP, the S&P equal weighted, then that would be my stop loss. I would get out of the market and I would sell all my positions. Okay, so that's my stop loss right there. Again, we need to control and measure risk, as we all know. Again, if that happens. All right, guys. So I'm hoping this video has helped you in some way. Uh, let me know what you think uh, in the comment section. Let me know what your thoughts are. Do you think it's more likely for the stock market to break out above the highs here, the August highs? Or do you think it's more likely for the stock market to break down below the lows of August? Let me know in the comment section your thoughts. Also, guys, join me tomorrow in Sunday's member video. We're going through the markets and Bitcoin and gold in more detail, and also from an Elliott Wave perspective. And if you're not a member, you can join on the link you see right there. Thank you very much indeed. Bye for now. <music>